Clara Schumann, Robert Schumann and Johannes Brahms are arguably the most famous law triangle in classical music history. Some of the most burning questions are, did Clara cheat on her husband, did Brahms actually love her or in fact simp for her, and did this maybe drove Robert to become depressed and what is the connection to his attempted suicide? All of those questions I will try to answer in this video, but therefore we have to go back in time. 200,000 years ago when the first humans, oh, okay stop right here, not that far back. 1810. Robert Schumann was born in the German city Zwickau. Early on he learned to play the piano. Different to most composers, he didn't start his professional life as a musician or composer. He studied law, because it was seen as a more stable career path by his mother. A hand injury that he had probably gotten through a self-made finger strengthening device and that his aspirations of becoming a concert pianist once and for all. Schumann would get more into composing and working as a critic for the Leipzig Allgemeine Musikalische Zeitung, a newspaper. He achieved recognition and fame as a composer in the mid-1830s. Around the time, Brahms was born. In 1840, Robert married Clara Wieck, a famous pianist, later to be known as one of the most influential female composers under the name Clara Schumann. Robert first encountered Johannes Brahms in 1853. At that time, Brahms was a relatively unknown composer and pianist, while Schumann, though struggling with mental health issues, was a highly respected figure in the musical world. Schumann was immediately impressed by Brahms' compositions and artistic abilities. In a famous article published in the Neue Zeitschrift für Musik, New Journal for Music, in October 1853, Schumann wrote a glowing review of Brahms, declaring him as the long-awaited young eagle in music. This article played a crucial role in establishing Brahms' reputation and career, and Brahms was very much thankful for it. The relationship between Brahms and the Schumanns deepened, with Brahms becoming a close friend of the family. However, shortly after this introduction, Robert Schumann's mental health deteriorated, leading to an attempted suicide and to his eventual institutionalization. Brahms and Clara were spending more time together after these events, but Brahms was also visiting Robert and looking after him. As Jan Sprafer describes in his book Johannes Brahms' a Biography, Brahms had fallen helplessly in love with Clara. By this point, Brahms had moved into the family home of the Schumanns in order to help Clara with the children. Living with her but sleeping in separate rooms, unable to act on his feelings, almost caused him to go out of his mind. Moving in and helping to raise the children of another man is probably the maximum amount of simping you can do. Nevertheless, you have to realize that Brahms did all Robert. As I mentioned, a huge part of Brahms' fame came from the article that Robert had written about him. So taking care of his family can be seen as an act of honor. The problem with Brahms were the letters he wrote. I can do nothing but think of you. What have you done to me? Can't you remove the spell you have cast over me? There are way more letters from Brahms and Clara that indicate some kind of romantic interest, but just on the side of Brahms. Brahms was around 21 and Clara around 35 at that time. I also find it very hilarious that there exists a book with over 600 pages full of printed letters from two people. Imagine your chat on your phone with your best friend would get leaked. You'd be a dead man or woman. Mark Zuckerberg could literally blackmail every single person on this planet. By November of 1854, Clara herself is insisting that Brahms addresses her by though, the second person singular reserved for an intimate friendship. By the following March, Brahms not only begins using her first name, but addresses the status to my dearly beloved Clara and by June simply to my Clara, which at that time had to be scandalous because she was married. In a letter from August of 1855, Brahms writes, my beloved Clara, I wish I could write to you as tenderly as I love you and tell you all the good things that I wish you. You are so infinitely dear to me, dearer than I can say. I should like to spend the whole day calling you endearing names and paying you compliments without ever being satisfied. To be fair, people at that time expressed themselves differently, but it seems pretty obvious to me. Robert Schumann passed away in 1856. After his death, Johannes and Clara remained friends until the end of their lives, but their friendship was never the same as it has been before. For one reason or another, Brahms decided to focus on his career. Clara was seemingly distraught, writing in her diary that I felt as if I were returning from a funeral on her way home from visiting him shortly after her husband's death. Brahms went on to travel and perform and he had affairs with numerous women but never settled long term with anyone else. In 1888, Clara demanded all letters back from Brahms. He travels to the Rhine and during a steamboat trip near Deidesheim in Germany, he throws several parcels into the waves. As Clara begins to burn the letters that remain, her daughters stop her from doing so. Something must have been private that she didn't want to get out into the world. The relationship between Clara and Johannes was not a reason for Schumann's mental health issues, because they didn't get to be that close until Robert was already institutionalized. In the end, we will never figure out if something happened or not. Still, it's pretty clear to say that Brahms was a huge simp, and you probably don't want to end up like him, because he is very much known for being bitter, resentful and alone. Click this video right next. Thanks for watching, we see you on the next one.